Hi, welcome to the San Diego Tech Immersion Group introduction meeting for Linux. Uh, my name is Brad Cunningham. This is Paul Whitmer and Scott Reed. We're here at the Cracking Bytes office in Carlsbad where we host the TIG meetings. Uh, and we just wanted to give you an overview of what our upcoming track is going to be, uh, a little bit about why we chose this track, what book we're going to be using, um, what our first assignment is, and a little intro on Linux itself. Um, so our next track is going to be an overview of Linux. It's been a little while since we've done a beginner track, so we're going to kind of go back to basics. And uh, we think as most of you are probably Microsoft-based developers, this might be a new topic for you. Um, Linux has obviously been around for a very long, very long time, but a lot of Microsoft developers don't know a whole lot about it. Uh, some of you may already be very well versed in Linux, but we think it's a good time to go back to basics with Linux. And Scott will tell us a little bit about why we chose this track. Yeah, so we held um, in the previous meeting at the end of the, um, what was the topic? It was continuous DevOps. DevOps or continuous delivery. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of that meeting, we um, held a vote and we basically threw around a bunch of different ideas. Um, some of them were Linux, obviously, the UI design, React.js, clean code, cloud development, functional programming, um, a couple of others that didn't get very many votes. Um, and we did one vote to basically narrow down the topics and the two topics chosen were Linux and functional programming and then Linux beat out functional programming nine to seven. So, and we think it's a good time, as Brad said, to cover Linux because um, with the onset of Bash in Windows as well as Docker in Windows, um, you know, a lot of uh, Windows uh, people that use Windows are getting more exposure to Linux and, and Bash, as well as um, .NET Core is coming out. Well, it's, it's out, but um, it's becoming more mainstream, and the API is solidifying, um, basing it make, making it more approachable. Um, so with that, you should be able to run, write your .NET apps and run them in Linux, and it would be nice to be able to navigate and get around in Linux after, after you've deployed. Yeah, I think if you've done any cloud development at all on AWS or Azure, you've probably encountered at least one of the services that's run primarily on Linux, or some of the tooling you want to use probably runs primarily on Linux. And Microsoft's approach in the last year or two, maybe in the what we'd call the post Balmer era has been to kind of open their arms to developers and to platforms and say, um, we want to have our dev tooling and our dev runtimes be able to be executed on any OS and we want our cloud tooling to support that. So they're supporting Linux developers. Um, in fact, one of the first builds of what they call core CLR, um, which is the core, the new .NET core runtime, um, I think within the first week, the Linux build was passing unit tests and the Windows build was failing. <laughs> so they had some preference or, or some code that worked on Linux um, and didn't actually work on Windows. So they're, they're full board on supporting uh, supporting Linux with their next version of .NET. So we think as a, as a modern Microsoft developer, you're gonna need to know it. You need to be a polyglot programmer, you need to be a polyglot operating system user as well. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about what book we chose. Um, it's going to be a book called The Linux Command Line. And By William E. Schatz, Jr. Yeah, and we actually found, I actually found after I purchased this book that he's got this available on his own website for free in digital form. Um, so you can get the printed book. The printed book's a little bit odd. Um, it's actually it's, a coloring book. <laughs> yeah, it's if you can see the margins. Size. Um, this book is excessively large, but the margins are really huge. It's printed like a normal book, but the size, the form factor. That's is so big, you can so. take notes in crayon. The extra <laughs> white space. So yeah. Stay in the lines, though. I guess so. Yeah, it's a little bit strange. Um, but we think it's a really good book. It's very highly rated on Amazon, um, and a lot of people mm -hmm. seem to say it's between this book and another book, kind of the, the uh, canonical Linux book that's a bit old at this point, but still very valuable. It's the canonical Unix book. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 And we'll yeah. talk about Unix and Linux in the first meeting, that sort of thing. But um, this one seems to be a, a better book for getting you into Linux quickly, getting you up to speed and being capable in Linux. So, um, so we chose that. And there's some other online uh, tools that we found that we'll discuss in the first meeting and over the course of the other meetings on, on how to learn Linux. Uh, but this will be our primary focus with this book. And for the first reading assignment, and what we want everyone to have accomplished by the time we get to the first meeting, is to read through chapters um, 1 through 10. So that's about a hundred and little over a hundred pages, about hundred and three pages. It's part one in the book, and it's called "Learning the Shell." 
And it's basically for some of you that already had some exposure to Unix in the, in the past, it's going to be primarily review. It's mostly skimmable. It has stuff like the, you know, the various options that you can pass to, you know, commands. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's it's not a lot of reading as much as it is just a refresher. Right. Yeah. Even for me, I'm I'm not a Linux expert, but I've had you know a fair bit of exposure to the shell and I'm comfortable in it. Um, it is a it's an easy read. You don't you don't have to be a Linux expert even to um, to be able to kind of skim most of this. Really, what what it is is introducing to you to the concepts that <clears throat> are going to be a little different when you're coming from a Windows background. So uh, a heavy use of the shell, which generally Windows developers don't leverage. Um, CMD is kind of a crap shell. Um, PowerShell yes. is an attempt at a better shell, and I don't a, know. It sucks it for has, some things. It has, uh, some, it things. Some, some pros and cons. Correct. Yeah. Um, uh, and file systems is different in, in Linux. Um, the slashes go the other direction. Yeah, that's important. That's the correct um, way. Yeah. The cor sorry. The slashes <laughs> go the correct direction. Um, permissions are different. Um, permissions are more thoroughly baked into Linux. Uh, Windows users are typically just turn off UAC, give me admin rights, I own the whole box. Linux doesn't really operate that way. Um, so those are the things that will be a little bit different for you. But, um, you know, in my skimming of it so far, it, I know I know a little bit of Linux, and it, it hasn't been uh, too difficult to keep up with it. I've definitely learned a lot of stuff. I learned something on the first page, I think, already, actually. On oh, the showing, calendar? The calendar, yeah. That was cool to type cal into the into the shell and get a calendar. So um, so that's our plan. By by the, the time of the first meeting um, later this month, uh, we will want everyone to have read through chapter 10. And we'll post these details on uh, sdtig.com when we schedule the meetup right after this. And so, so you might be wondering, you know, how do you actually get Linux? If you are a Windows developer, if you are a Windows user, how do you actually get a Linux instance to play with? Paul? Yeah, well, there's several ways to do that. Uh, one is to download, a, a, you can do it in a virtual box. I was or a VM. You can use VirtualBox. That's one way to use it. Uh, it's Java based, but that'll run parallels or VirtualBox if you have a Mac is another option. Uh, VMware Fusion if you have a Mac also. But if you have a Mac, you have uh, a terminal. You have a terminal. Yeah. yeah. It's really tough. And it has Bash. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So that'll get you a decent. A live download. CD. Uh, you can also download it and just boot into your uh, CD ROM and run it off that as another option. Sorry, what's a CD ROM? Exactly. I don't yeah. have one of those yeah. anymore. None of your machines are shit. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, you can do a live floppy. Disk. You can also yes. do it. You can do a live uh, uh, USB. USB. Actually. Yeah, I've seen that's, it. That's, that's more yeah, uh, there's realistic. The, another one is uh, if you have an Amazon account, they have the free tier. For the first year, you can SSH with Putty uh, for Windows users. That's an easy way to do it. Uh, for those people really committed, you can dual boot. Uh, basically, you can slice a hard drive. That you have already on there, and you can partition. I believe is the partition is the word nomenclature. Yeah, nomenclature, guys. And then you can <laughs> boot uh, whichever side you want to. You can. They usually use Grub, would be the bootloader for that. Uh, another so not free option, but pretty cheap and fun to use is a Raspberry Pi. There's a growing tech community. You can. They have one for five dollars, I think. But you're going to need external parts. You know, like a USB cable. Uh, HDMI cable and uh, not a USB cable. I'm sorry, but the mini uh, memory. Uh, what's it called? Yeah, the micro hard. SD. Yeah, micro SD for SD, that. Yeah. And last but not least is the Docker uh, in Windows that can have Linux and Bash in the new anniversary, anniversary update. Update. Yeah. yeah. I personally don't prefer that one. That's the last resort, but it'll do in a pinch. I would definitely go with one of the other options first. It ha I still have networking options that I haven't been able to finagle fully through. Yeah, I think on if you have the latest version of Windows 10, the anniversary update, you get Bash on Windows, and that's the one that Paul Singh has some reservations on. Um, mm -hmm. Just because there is a little bit of weirdness there. It's not a virtual machine. It's just the Linux subsystem within Windows, so shared machine hardware like the networking card um, and the file system. Those things can be a little bit different when you're operating in Bash on Windows than if you had a fully isolated version of Linux. Um, but Docker on Windows will run Linux just fine. If, so, yeah, so, so, but let me back up just a little you bit. You do have to know if, a little bit ahead of time, though. 
No. no. You can get a pre-baked Docker image with Linux yeah. pretty easily. Right, Docker, but I'm Docker saying like run. to know like what root passwords and all that stuff uh, mean sure. and doing your if sure. configs and IP yeah. tables to get through the Docker layer. Yeah. Well, so that's only if, once you're going into the networking part. You can run an Ubuntu instance with a single Docker run command. Right. right? right the right. problem is you have to get Docker onto Windows. Right. So you'd have to, um, well, the preferred way, I guess, now is the beta. Right, Docker, Docker native Windows beta. Right. Docker native, you would need the anniversary update of Windows and the native Docker. But you can do the old version of Docker on no. an old version of Windows, and it runs a virtual machine. It, it does. Runs it actually runs a small way, Linux box. In those are independent. The anniversary update is for running Bash. Right. I was Correct. running the beta of Docker on my okay. Windows 10 instance prior to right. the anniversary update. So okay. those two are independent. But um, if you have Windows 10, don't install the anniversary update just for the purpose of getting Bash. Uh, <laughs> if you already have the anniversary update and you've gone through the pain, then okay, you know maybe right. you want to use Bash. That's fine. But like it is uh, a non-trivial no update. update. Yeah, it is is not there. Yeah. So you've heard us mention Ubuntu a couple of times. Um, there's many different distributions of Linux or distros, as they'll call them. Um, we're gonna. This book uh, tries to stay distribution agnostic, and we're gonna try to stay as distribution agnostic as possible. Most of the things we're gonna talk about are gonna be core Linux features mm -hmm. that should be available to you in any major distribution. Um, I would say probably recommend Ubuntu just because it's the distribution that's most tailored to the end consumer tinkerer. Um, my background is in the Linux world is in CentOS and SUSE Linux before to that, but those tend to be a little more tailored towards server environments like a Red Hat based server is the CentOS is the free version of Red Hat. Right. Whereas Ubuntu is a little more tailored towards like a GUI desktop if you actually wanted to run that as your personal computer instead of Windows. Um, but it shouldn't matter uh, for at least everything I've hit so far should not matter what you're in. In fact, if you're yeah. running OS X, the bash terminal in OS X will do uh, any of the things that I've run into so well, far. Anything uh, in part one. That's the Yeah, so far in part only, one I haven't had a problem. It's only once we start getting to networking that things are going to get weird. Um, Networking, but, package management. Yeah, and, well, package management, I was going to say, that's one thing that is slightly different, 152. Between them, yeah. Yeah, so that will be... But I think there is a mention in here of the different package managers. Yeah, the different package managers, yeah. Like exactly. aptkit and yum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so there's Debian style, Red Hat style. Yeah, 53. Mm -hmm. There's all yeah. kinds of fun ones. Yeah, yeah. So... Those are the two main ones. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so would, the book is pretty good about... Distro agnostic. I would probably say Ubuntu. Ubuntu is the version that comes on Windows. So if you do the Windows Anniversary Edition, you get a build of Ubuntu. If you it, disagree? Which a little bit. If you're gonna do like, if you're gonna actually have the visual and stuff like that for a very beginner a desktop, I would definitely lean towards Mint. Mint. Linux yeah, Mint. Is, it's based on uh, Ubuntu, but they've made some changes. Made. Uh, mostly for the on the graphical, they stick with uh, GNOME instead of doing their Unity, okay. and it's a little bit easier to look at, and it's okay. a little yeah, bit cleaner. Here is the URL there, Paul. Uh, try LinuxMint.com. LinuxMint. Oh, Lint Mint is the uh, financial. <laughs> yeah. financial. We'll make sure to scoop up these links, so we'll put a link to the the book's website, a link yeah. to yeah, um, Linux this Linux Mint. Yeah. And I would pick the cinnamon. They have several different versions, but pick the cinnamon. I hate cinnamon. Yeah. I don't like mint really either. So We're Linux all Mint about the herbs, man. You right. do like herbs, <laughs> <laughs> and so that, that's what I would pick. And then, if like I said before, you if you're thinking about dual booting, get the live uh, CD slash USB drive. You can run it from there, and uh, if if you if you're comfortable with it, it has an install. Uh, icon on there from I'll convert it from the live CD to the other one. Yes. Plus you can take your USB key to the coffee shop and hack the government with the USB key and then pull it out, take your computer with you, good to go. Burn <laughs> it in the trash can. Someone's watched Mr. Robot too much. Yeah, far too much. <laughs> okay, so that's um, that's a gist of, of the overview. We just wanted to kind of introduce you why we picked it, uh, what we're what book we're gonna be reading and what our first assignment will be. And so uh, we hope that you all join us at our first meeting. We'll be posting the details shortly on sdtig.com. If you can't make it in person like we have been for the past year or so, we're going to live stream the event uh, using uh, Google Hangouts and YouTube live streaming. So that link will be up there uh, as well once we get the live event. And uh, I think that's about it. Hope to see you guys later this month at the first Linux meeting for TIG. Thanks. Take care, guys. Hey, gals. Come on. That. A lot of dead airtime.
can't find it. Now I'm going to need to edit this video. There we are. Oh, jeez.